Okay, and continuing to work with my logo here of my dog head. I am moving from simple shapes like the circles to slightly more complicated shapes like the tongue, simple shapes that are customized like the heart that I'm using for the kind of skeletal nose, to more complex shapes still like the inside of the ear. So I know that I want the nose filled in as a solid black shape. In design, that's called full bleed because it's a shape that's just filled in with black ink. So I want to look at my other full bleed shapes. I think I want to make the inside of the ear a full bleed shape. Now notice this one's a little bit trickier. So there's a few ways I can make it. I can make it with the pen tool. Start at a point. Go down and curve that point, kind of bottom weight the curve, and then come up and contain it. So just a two point shape that then I can double click, whoops, and alter, holding down the command key on my Mac, control key on your PC, the shape. You're using the pen tool, right? I'm using the pen tool. So it looks just like an outline, but I want to convert this into a solid shape because I don't ever want you to have borders in your finished design. And that's because we want it to be able to transfer over to PhotoP without mistakes. And in order for it to transfer over as a vector into PhotoP cleanly, we need it just to be what are called outline shapes. So I'm going to turn off the border and turn on the background color. And it's already black, so I'll leave it there. And if I don't want it to come to a, a perfect point, because that's a little, a little uh, aggressive, I'm just going to round it a little bit by pulling on this, this corner. Then, of course, I could double click it, or I can just single click it and have kind of a transform box there to stretch it, get the shape I want. If I double click it, I see the anchor points, and I see that this is coming to too much of a point. And so what I'm going to do is actually add an anchor point, and I'm going to move this one more to the side, and then I'm going to adjust, whoops, adjust these handles while holding down my command key so I can adjust the curve handles independently. That's how you add the curve handle with by holding down uh, Citral. Or for you, command. The curve handles are there whenever it's a curve, right? So you just have to click on the point to see them. And mine are only doing straight lines. Yeah, so in order to get the curve, when you're using the pin tool, so I'll do a box. If I just click, move, click, move, I'll get straight lines. But if I click and then drag, I'll get a curve. And then when I click on those, those points, I'll see the curve handles. And if I hold down Command on a Mac or Control on a PC, I can adjust them indiv individually. If I hold down Shift, I can adjust just the length individually, but the angle will be for both. And if I don't hold down anything and adjust the curves, it will do it equally on both sides. So it takes some practice. And if at any time you want to convert a straight edged point to a curve, you just double click it. And you can bring it back as well. So that's why you have to close the shape often before you get it right. So that's how you can get kind of a, a chevron shape, or a, not a chevron shape, but like an eyeball almond shape, is make a square and then just curve two sides of it. So there's lots of different ways to get the shapes you want. Don't worry about them being you know, perfectly symmetrical or perfectly clean. We're trying to learn the tools.
So I'm happy with that inside shape. You can always adjust the curves a little bit more. Whoops. Let's round it out a little bit more. Yeah, so that looks good. So that's one full bleed shape. I might as well do the easy ones that are there. So like I did for the tongue, I'm going to use the rounded rectangle tool. Shape tool, and then put that underneath the ear. Okay, and now here's the other full bleed shape. So I'm going to use an ellipse, or actually I'll do a compound shape. This is the easiest way. So many different ways. But we asked about how do we add a shape together. So I'm going to make a perfect circle for that curve in the mouth. And then I'm going to add to it a rectangle. And I'm going to start the rectangle right at that anchor point, and it's going to actually lock to that anchor point for me. Because the computer tries to be smart and, and link up things. So you see how that anchor point is perfectly overlapping the top of the circle's anchor point. Now, if I select both of them, hold down shift, select both of them, I get the different workspace options, and I want to add them together. So now it's just one shape, perfectly clean. And of course, I can then modify that. Now, if I want to see this shape behind my tongue, because right now it's on the top of my tongue, that's what these things come in. This is the order of the layers, right? Just like in Photopea, the layers are like stacked pieces of, of paper. So I can move it back down through my layer so that my tongue is on top of it. And I can make sure these are all solid black. Because their default is not quite solid black. And just by the end, I need it to be. And then, of course, I can play with its opacity just so I can see the sketch. And I can see I want to cut this out from it. Right? So to cut it out, I'm just going to do something simple. I'm just going to draw another rectangle that shows where the cutout is. I'm going to select that and select my big compound shape and then subtract one from the other. Same thing with this tooth here. Let's see. When I, everything on the left side is way too big. Yeah, so it has this, because it's browser based, Vector has the same issues that uh, Photo has. So when you want to zoom on the tools, you click in the, the web search bar, just like I did, and hit Command plus or Command minus, and that will shrink your tools or enlarge your tools, right? And then when you want to zoom in on your image, you got to click on your artboard. And then you can do command plus and minus to zoom in there. So you just want to find what works for your screen. I think this is a good setting for mine. And so when you find that your tools are changing size, just click on the artboard and you'll get back to zooming in on your, your selection. Okay, so I'm going to use this for the teeth. But I'm not going to leave it as it is, even though this is a custom shape tool. So instead, I'm going to modify it. And I'm going to actually just delete this anchor point. And then I'm going to double click on this anchor point. It's a strange way they decided to do it.
and I'm going to round it out. Hmm. I have to do this on this side. I'm trying to get this this curved line to match what I drew perfectly. So is there a way to add multiple anchor points to one curving line? Yes, to add an anchor point, you double click so you can see them and then you can just click on it and add a new anchor point at any time. And you delete anchor points just by clicking on them and hitting delete. So I'm just making a little tooth shape. If I click off of it, and just click inside it, it will give me a transform box. And that way I can just squeeze it and kind of make a nice kind of organic tooth shape. But you really want to understand what's going on. Like I have a straight on this side. I want to round that out. And move this anchor point just a little bit out and down. I want to move this one. So every, ah, there you go. That's what's confusing me. You get rid of this anchor point. You want to really understand what each thing is doing. And that can take a while sometimes. So that's where simplicity is very helpful. But if you have kind of weird, weird lumps or jagged edges on your shapes, just always go to the anchor points and make sure you understand which ones are curved, which ones are straight, and so on. And once you've got well, it kind of sm smoothed out, then you can use your transform tools. Okay, now I'm going to cut out um, the inside of this. So how do I do that? I'm going to right-click on it and duplicate it. And I'll just change the color so it's easy to see. And then I'm going to change its size. Holding down shift, I want nice thick lines, like that, like I'm inking with a really thick pen. Then I'm going to hold down shift on both, and I'm going to subtract one from the other. Then I'm going to take that whole thing, right click on it, and duplicate it, and then use that tooth over here. So I have one tooth that's on a black background and one that's not, right? So now, how do I cut out behind this shape in my mouth big shape? So I'm going to do that just with the pen tool. And it's going to very simply cut a little window out by making a contained shape behind this tooth. I select it, click on it, hold down shift, click on the big shape behind it, and then I subtract one from the other. So this is all just to make my full bleed shape. And now I need to cut out a little bit from this top edge. And instead of cutting it now, Whoa, what happened? <laughs> Sorry, since I'm on my trackpad, sometimes I can go places I don't want to go. I went back to my tutorial somehow. Ah. So I want to go to the last thing I worked on. There it is. All right. So now to get this. <laughs> So my problem is I'm, I'm uh, using two fingers to drag around. What I should get used to doing is holding down spacebar when I want to drag around instead of using the, the shortcut on my trackpad because it's navigating me to the previous screen. Okay, so to get this curve, I now want to edit this shape. 
So I'm going to double click 